On today's episode, we are gonna be doing some high-end DIY decor for the kitchen. So let's get started on our first DIY. my best friend, didn't care about the rules, It's an amazing command center with a little bit of a twist, but for this, we're gonna need to get powerful, use some power tools, and I'm gonna meet you outside. For today's projects, I am trying to use up things that I have on hand. So for our message center, we are going to be using a piece of faux brick that I had left over from my bathroom makeover in the past. I thought it would look really cool to be on the back of our message center. So I cut this down to the dimensions that would work for our project. And I kind of did this by laying out all of the elements of the command center to a certain degree and just kind of trying to visualize how it would all be set up. Then I had some leftover wood trim that was a little bit too wide for what I wanted for the frame. So I ripped that down on my table saw as well. I I really love a table saw because you can really cut things down to specific sizes and if you don't have a flat piece of trim but you have a larger piece of trim you can just cut it down and it works out great so having a table saw is really fun as long as you keep your fingers away from the blade it's not scary then we're gonna make a miter frame we are taking I believe it ended up being about two inches wide and we cut it on a miter so you just cut the edges at a 45 degree angle so make sure that the side piece match up and the top and bottom pieces match up and then you'll have a perfectly square frame and nothing will be out of whack as long as those pieces are in alignment and the way we finish off the frame is using a little bit of wood glue on each one of the seams shooting some nails in from each direction and then letting that dry. And it's actually pretty easy. It's a lot easier than you would think. Now we're gonna set that aside for just a second and move on to some of the other elements. Now we're gonna revisit the brick and we're gonna do a German schmear on it. This is the same technique that I used in my bathroom renovation for my half bath on my main floor. It's really cool. One of the reasons I wanna do this is because where I'm gonna end up putting it is in close proximity to that. And so I thought it would be really cool to kind of just repeat that element. So all you do for that is take some joint compound, kind of just put it on in a random pattern. Usually it's best to work on a 45 degree angle and normally I would use a wider putty knife than I used here but I just found that one easily and I just made do with it and so I just use some fast dry speckle because it dries very quickly and just kind of push that into all of the joints and scraped it off and then we set that aside to dry. The next element is, is I wanted to have a little place to put a little floral and my original idea was cutting a circle and like setting the pot down into the circle. Well, <laughs> This idea did not work out for me this time around. It's just that the wood piece is a little bit too small. It was very difficult to navigate with a jigsaw. If I had the right tools, I could have probably made this happen with like a scroll saw or bandsaw. Even though I've been DIYing for a long time, I don't have every tool under the sun and I'm always adding to it. Right now it's a space issue, which I'm working on hopefully. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is not gonna work. So I'm gonna come up with a plan see if you will so instead what I decided to do is kind of build like a little box for the little plant to sit down in and then I can easily switch it out it doesn't have to be the same size pot and I can maybe even use it for pens if I didn't want to put the floral there you could just put a whole bunch of pens and pencils in this box it was very versatile so that's what I ended up doing and all the dimensions I'm not really giving because it's really going to depend on what size and scale you end up making but you just kind of lay everything out and see what works and honestly I didn't even measure these I just kind of eyeballed everything on that and I bought uh, I built a simple box without a back so I did a more sturdy bottom and then some thinner wood around the edges to build that out. Next up, I wanted to put in a letter holder. And so what I did for this is I cut down some, that same like one by three, I think is what I used, cut that down to the same width as our box below it, and then did some thinner side panels again and cut that down to size. And then I used some paint sticks for the front to kind of give it like a crate effect. And 
and then I ended up nailing that all together as well and no back again on that as well. The next element was a little pencil ledge or a chalk ledge. You know, it, it, this is just a little ledge that we could put the marker for the whiteboard or chalk for the chalkboard and maybe a pen or a pencil just to have handy. I just took, I think it was a one by two this time around, and then a little bit of trim that was similar to the thickness of a paint stick, but it was just some scrap wood that I had around. I just gave it a little ledge on the front and called it a day. It was very simple for this part. Then while I was cutting everything down I took a 5 by 7 frame from the dollar 25 tree as my kids have coined it <laughs> or the dollar tree it was these simple black frames and you'll see that we're going to be using those a lot in this project but I also had a chalkboard from the dollar tree as well and it was a little bit too big for this frame but I wanted to use this frame to kind of frame out the chalkboard so while I was cutting everything I just cut that chalkboard down to fit in that frame so with everything built and before we head inside to kind of finish things out a bit, the joint compound on my brick was dry. And so I went over that with a matte sealer, just sprayed it on really good and left that to dry. And the reason I did that is it will kind of seal all of our joint compound and richen up that brick. And, and I just think it's really good to finish that off and not leave that unfinished, but that's kind of an optional step. Then we went inside and I painted out all of those wood build items in a matte black chalk paint. Um, I did the frame, I did all of the pieces in that black chalk paint and let that dry. Then I attached the frame with some E6000 glue, a very generous amount, but not so much that it squeezed out the edge. And then we're gonna let that dry, at, but I'm not finished with this step. We're gonna do a little bit more in a little bit, but for now we're gonna leave that be. And then I had this kind of bigger um, frame from the Dollar Tree, and it was kind of a square one. I think it's about 11 by 11. They, you know, you're gonna have to check your stores. Not everybody has the same thing. I, I bought a whole bunch of these a year or two ago, and they've been in a stash. It just so happened that it was pretty close to the size of this scrapbook paper that I picked up at Hobby Lobby on like a four for a dollar, I don't know, like a year ago. It was just a blank um, calendar sheet and I took out the glass in that, cut that scrapbook paper down to size and then I put everything back in the frame. And then I took another one of our five by seven Dollar Tree frames, the same frame that we used for the chalkboard just a second ago and I, took a piece of cork that I got from the Dollar Tree and cut out two pieces of that and kind of layered them on each other. Um, and then I used the backing of the five by seven frame and stacked that all in there. If I were to do it again, I'd almost try to squeeze another little bit of like foam core board or something in there to give it a little bit more push pin depth. <laughs> I think I could have layered that up a little bit better, um, but that's what I did for that one. And then I put that all together, obviously without the glass in that case as well. Now it's time to totally assemble our board. And this was super fun. So what I did is I took E6000 and applied it to the backs of everything and glued everything down. And then I left it overnight to dry. Now we're going to not leave it as is, even though it might be strong enough, if you were just gonna be using adhesive and nothing else, I would probably recommend something even stronger like a liquid nail or something like that. So the next morning after everything had dried, I went outside and from the back side, I kind of measured out where everything was, shot in a couple of finish nails just to make sure I was hitting it in the right spot, but also to add stability. And then I took some screws and went ahead and screwed in from the back side some longer screws into all of the bases of our wood pieces. That will add a little bit more strength and stability to our project without you know, messing up with the aesthetics of it. And then to kind of finish out the frame, I went from the back side and shot some nails from the back side in and making sure the nails are not gonna shoot all the way through the front. We wouldn't want that to happen. So make sure you're using the right length of nails. And this will just kind of make our piece a little bit more sturdy. And I have to tell you, I really love how this turned out. I think it's really interesting with the 
brick background. I used things that I had on hand, but nothing was like crazy expensive. You could easily switch out the brick backing to like a solid piece of wood, just working with what you got. I used a lot of elements from the Dollar Tree and paint sticks and things that were not like overall crazy expensive if you were going out and purchasing it for the first time. And so just get creative. Maybe you can find scrap wood on your Facebook marketplace and get something really fun and really interesting. I love how this turned out. Right here, I'm kind of just displaying it on my shelf because I do have a specific place that I am going to be putting it, but it's not ready yet because we're gonna do a little room makeover, but this command center would go great in a kitchen. I don't have the wall space in my kitchen, but I have something in mind, so stay tuned for that. So for our next DIY, we are gonna be making a, like a small version of a blanket ladder, except for it's gonna be for tea towels. I saw this somewhere and I thought, well, that's a really cute idea. <laughs> so we're gonna make that now. And I had a couple of two by two lumber pieces left over, I don't know, maybe from my last blanket ladder, I'm not quite sure, but I had a couple of cut off pieces that would work perfectly for this. So I didn't have to buy it, but a two by two is relatively inexpensive. So with our side pieces, I cut them down to 18 inches and then I wanted it to lean easier and not be lifted up. And so what I decided to do was put a little angle on the bottom and I ended up cutting those bottom pieces at a 10 degree angle. And that's just so it would lean nicer up against the wall. Then I had some leftover wood dowels that were sent to me in a mystery box challenge. I think she sent me two packages and I only ended up using one. And so I had this package of three. I think it's from Walmart. They're pretty inexpensive. If not, you could just get some three quarter inch wood dowels. Now, I left these the length that they were. If I were to do it again, I would have probably cut off three inches from these and made them nine inches long. So I'll just tell you that ahead of time, but I did leave my dowels as is. Then we needed to kind of mark where we wanted all of our rungs. And what I ended up doing is doing the top one at two inches on center from there. And then the next one was at eight inches. And then the next one was at 14 inches. So it started at two and then every six inches. And then there was four inches on that bottom rung. Now we're gonna use a wood boring bit. This is a three quarters inch bit. And we are gonna drill just barely in to create holes to countersink our wood down and it will just make it more sturdy this way. Now you could just like shoot some nails in from the side or screw some screws if that's what you have available. But I really think this is a really nice way to put these together and you just kind of drill down just a little bit so that you can have something to shove your dowel into. And so that's what we did is we used this wood boring bit. Then we took a little bit of wood glue and kind of squeezed it all together. We might have used a hammer to get them in so it was nice and snug, which is actually a good thing. And then we shot in a couple of longer finish nails through the side. And the reason I did that is just for a little bit more added stability. And then we left that to dry. And then later on, we took it inside and stained out the whole thing in an antiquing glaze and let that dry. And that was it for that project. Then you just hang your tea towels from it. I added a little boxwood wreath just to kind of give it a little bit of personality. I've leaned this up against my tile backsplash in my kitchen, but I think it would be really fun to have that next to a sink. If your sink has something to lean it against. I just think this is really cute and adds a nice piece of decor and interest into your kitchen. You could paint this out. I ended up, you know, doing kind of a stain treatment with the glaze, but there's a lot of possibilities on this and I just think it's so cute. And as an added bonus, it was free to me, <laughs> but even if you had to buy all the stuff, you could definitely do this for probably less than $10. And our next project is a super easy riser. If you're just kind of getting the feel for power tools, this one would be a really good one to kind of experiment on, but also, 
you could almost get away with not using power tools on this one. So if you don't have them, this is very doable as well. I just have this decorative wood square and some leftover knobs from an Ikea dresser that I didn't use on them and they're wood. And I thought we could use them as feet. And all I did here is kind of flip it over on the back side and kind of make another square all the way around about a half an inch in. And I just kind of made some markings all the way around. And what this will do is give us a point to put all of our feet on. And then I used a little wood glue and then I taped it into place and um, just so it would hold it into place while we flipped it over. Now, if it, we were trying to be easy, we could use a little uh, hot glue to kind of give it that instant stick, but I was working outside and I didn't have my hot glue again handy, so I just tightened it, taped it in place. But if you didn't have any power tools, you could just stop at the gluing and let the glue dry and not do the next step. But I think this will make it a little bit more sturdy. What we ended up doing is flipping it all over and shooting a couple of finished nails in from the top down into each one of those wood knobs turned feet. Then we took it up into my studio and I used the same antiquing glaze that we used on the little tea towel ladder and then just kind of covered it out entirely. Now you could paint this out. You could add French stripes, which I may end up doing eventually. And there's a lot of different ways that you could finish this out, but I just left it with a stain this time around. Put on my dish soap, a little greenery, and it just adds a really cute element in the kitchen that I, I think, you know, it's all the little details sometimes in the kitchen that kind of gives it that nice finish polish look. Well, I hope you had fun with me kind of using up scrap wood for my pile and other elements just for my craft room. If you liked this episode, let me know by hitting the like button below. And if you really enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And if you haven't done so already, consider hitting that subscribe button right here. I would love it if you joined the DIY Niner family and to all of my DIY Niners, I just want to remind you once again that you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.